This is the worst part of my job. Would you look at this freaking crap? This is like babysitting a bunch of freaking kids. I went and bought them the water and the, tr and the ice, and you wanna know how they pay me back? They throw it all over the ground. Quick trip lids, quick trip cups, bottled water, just miscellaneous trash out of your truck. Just, you know, clean it out wherever. I mean, look at this freaking crap. And I have to clean it up like they're my kids. Oh, there's a cigarette if you want one. Half used, he probably got yelled at for smoking. Oh, there's a straggler all the way over there. That's just fun. Freaking face is fried. up everybody I uh, everybody I think there's all of like six people that watch these videos so whatever but um, mainly my parents what's up parents um, so all the cables are laid and we are ready to pour concrete we have a slab inspection tomorrow and we are set up to pour on Thursday um, so we got weather coming in tonight, but we are protected. We got the slab, uh, the moisture barrier down today, uh, which is basically a fancy way of saying VizQueen. We got our pre-treat done underneath that. So the VizQueen's protecting that. Uh, all the cables are tied together, pushed through. Um, all the blockouts are taken care of for the doorways, for the garage door headers, for the uh, plumbing stuff. So. We are set to go. Um, I am, got some video footage of them out here working and, and come to me and uh, doing all that earlier today. Um, so I came back out here after we were finished. It's been uh, just crazy day, as I said yesterday, with all the weather, um, the nice weather we've been having. Uh, I've been playing catch up absolutely on every single job. Uh, my face shows it today. I think I put uh, over 200 miles on Black Betty back there today. And uh, so we have been just running with our hair on fire. It's about 6 o'clock right now. And I have not made it home yet, which I'm sure my wife is thrilled about. So I'm going to shoot this video real quick. Uh, yesterday I told you about... Uh, post tension cables and and uh, today I'm going to show you all all of it laid out talk to you a little bit about that and then um, I'm going to go home so let me turn this camera around show you what was done today and we will uh, be out of here quickly all right so um, as you can see it turned into a sea of plastic viz queen aka moisture barrier we got a little different color over there the uh, concrete guys didn't order enough plastic so guess what i got to make the 30 mile round trip an hour later to go get them plastic so that's why you see one little deal of black nothing special other than the fact that that's what lowe's had that's what i grabbed that's what we used it's all six mil plastic um, you can see right around all the plumbing i 
went ahead and took the extra step of uh, that's where they had to cut around all of it so I took the tape and filled all those seams in uh, just a little while ago so that um, no water got in there tonight and just made us a soupy area there so really wasn't absolutely necessary just something I did so um, I'm sure you can hear the wind I'm sure I still don't have the audio equipment I'm still shooting everything with my iPhone so I'm sure this audio with the 20 mile an hour winds today is gonna be fantastic so just bear with me and I will get through this as soon as we can so what you see here is all of the post tension cables that is in lieu of rebar steel um, they're steel they are still steel cables they are just encased in this plastic sheathing with grease in there to allow them to slide when they get compressed and put under tension. But it's basically just seven strand steel wrapped together and, uh, and slid through these sleeves. And the, each slab, as I discussed earlier, gets engineered for that specific slab. It comes with some engineered drawings I'll show you here in just a minute. And we put it all in uh, according to those specs. It gives us a, a layout on our grid pattern of the spacing and uh, each direction and then an anchor point. On the far end over there is the anchor point for everything running this way. And right here is where it is anchored there and the concrete will end up holding that anchor just the way we need it and then it slides through here what they're going to do is take their tensioning machine which is essentially just a hydraulic jack they're going to slide it overneath over that um, steel cable once these forms are gone and uh, they're going to start to put it under tension they're going to start pulling on the cable and it's anchored at that end over there and so there's two sides that are anchor points initially and two sides that are pull points. And so I believe the pull point is the west end of the barn, mom. And, uh, and the anchor point for right now is the uh, east end of the barn. So um once again like i said once the forms get pulled and all that they all essentially become anchor points these wedges right here these anchors right here are designed with teeth and so when you pull on them they will allow you to pull they just will not allow the cable to backslide on it so uh, whenever they put their machine on it and do all that um tensioning that's how it all ends up staying and, and then the sleeve allows it to slide in the concrete without tearing the concrete up. Uh, the theory behind post tension, um, I believe is pretty much just to put the slab under compression. And what I mean by that is, is the whole thing is, is basically pushing on itself. Um, the best analogy I can come up with on the spot is probably, uh, instead of, you know, holding your hand out like this, and just letting it float like this, it would be essentially making a fist. Um, the entire slab is under tension. Um, it's very dangerous if you cut into the slab and you hit one of those cables because there is tension on it. There's probably a lot of folk stories about, you know, clipping one of those cables, nicking it, the whole thing breaking and just ripping right up through the slab. Um, you hear those stories being in the construction industry, but I've never actually met somebody that happened to or seen it happen myself. So um, they say it is dangerous though. So uh, every time we have to do a remodel and we know that there's post tension in the slab, we have um, StressCon, which is the local post tension company here, come out and identify where the cables are so that whenever we cut the concrete, we're cutting around them and then we're being gentle and careful whenever we get to those. So, um, anyways, you can see that all of it has those little chairs right there that is holding the entire grid system up. That is for nothing more than allowing those cables to be fully encased with concrete, um, top, bottom, both sides, all the way around. Uh, so that's, you know, you don't see it obviously out on the edges where they pour down to the footing. Uh, 
um, but uh, you see it out in the field and we should have an average of about four inches of concrete all throughout there like we talked about the other day. Um, the other thing that got added today was this lip right here. This is nothing more than a furring strip, which is an inch and a half by an inch and a half. And that gives us our metal edge on our slab. So our slab will get poured up to this height and it'll turn down that edge and go all the way to this form, but underneath. And so our framing will sit from here back this way and our metal will slide down the inch and a half right here. And then this is the outside of the concrete. And so that just adds a little bit of extra protection for varmints and things like that, trying to crawl underneath the steel into the building. Um, what else can I show you today? That we didn't talk about yesterday. I can go up here. I'm going to show you the block outs at the stalls. Um, sorry, I wasn't paying attention to the camera. I hope you enjoyed looking at dirt. Let's see here. What else? some fizz queen flying up there we do have some rain coming in i mentioned that tonight but everything is protected um so right here we have this is all going to be a stall wall outside wall and then that is actually where our slab will end and that's our block out for our frost free hydrant um in this area right here will just be where the stalls for the horses are It'll get back filled with dirt and straw. Um, but what we've done here is you can see this board here. And it goes in, there we go, in several different places throughout this uh, form here. This is essentially a little pony wall, if you would, on top of the footing. This is all going to be concrete so that we can put our framing on it. <clears throat> and we can put our steel and metal on it and then we can put our stall doors in here and that's exactly what these block outs are these are four foot uh four inch to allow for trim boards four foot four inch block outs for our uh stall doors so um essentially the concrete will run level to the top of this form It'll hit this block here, and it'll go down to the bottom of the block and continue to run on the bottom of the block through the block out to the bottom of that block. And then once it gets to the other side of that block, go back up to the height of the form to continue on to the next block out. And it'll just repeat that for all four stall doors and it'll probably make a whole lot more sense once it's done and I can show it to you. But um, if you're not following along or you're kind of rolling your eyes or you just kind of glazed over and stopped listening to me about five minutes ago. so Which is most likely what's happened. Um, what else? I think really that's about it. Um, we are excited. I know my parents are excited. I'm excited to move on to the next phase. Framing, of course, is the next phase. And um, that'll be, that's always, that's actually one of my favorite phases of all of this. Is just because so much happens so fast and, and the structure really comes to life during that. So we're excited for that phase. And I think that's gonna be it for the slab phase. And whenever we get uh, to pouring concrete on Thursday morning, I believe we have, uh, truck scheduled to be here at eight o'clock and i will uh, film that for you too so um, fun fun and we will uh, come back whenever we're ready for that all right so i spoke with you earlier about um, the engineered drawing and here's what it looks like we'll leave this for the inspector uh, for him to come out and see tomorrow in fact i'll have to meet him up here because if i leave this out here it'll get soaked and and uh miserably wet so he's basically just going to open this up real fast check our spacing make sure the grid matches and um and he'll uh sign off i mean this is 
this slab inspection is usually, I think I've maybe failed one slab inspection in the uh, 14 years I've been building houses. So um, this is pretty much just a formality, this, this inspection, but um, I guess it's a necessary evil. So he can catch something at the last minute that uh, maybe the guys overlooked. So this is what it looks like. You can see uh, it calls out for all the spacing. Um, you reference all the different uh, section drawings down here and then the uh, general notes that go along with it um, and then basically this is an engineered set of drawings um, so we will uh, hopefully get our inspections done tomorrow and uh, be ready to pour on Wednesday so that's it for today I am headed home to uh, soak my face in aloe vera you know at least I would hope that if I had this type of sunburn, I would be on a beach somewhere. But in fact, I'm stuck in uh, Bixby, Oklahoma, uh, working all day. So I'll uh, go home, soak my face in aloe vera, and we will uh, be back with you tomorrow after we get inspected. Actually, I probably will shoot a little bit tomorrow, but uh, save what little bit I shoot tomorrow for the Thursday concrete pour video. And... Um, be, so I guess we'll be back with you on Thursday. So until next time, we'll see you up on the ridge.